So in the previous video we talked about um, K nearest neighbor classification and how it works in theory. So now let's apply this to our iris flower classification problem. So let's load um, our iris flower data set um, and we'll, we'll load it directly from sklearn um, because it is available there and it's already in the right format. So we have our data, those are our input features. And we have our targets here. Um, so we'll put the input features in our X variable um, and the, the targets in our Y value uh, variable. We can look at the various um, unique values that this iris Y variable can have. So that's the targets, the, the three different classes, zero, one, and two. So we'll have um, uh, the, the three different classes of our iris irises. The iris setosa is zero, iris versicolor is one, and iris virginica is um, two. So that's what we're trying to project on from or um, input feature space. So as we did before, um, if we have a training data set um, and a test data set, we'll, or if we have a set of data, we'll want to split this in a, in a training and a test data set, and we'll want to randomize the data so we don't rely on, on just some arbitrary ordering in the input data set. So what we'll do here is take all but the last 10 data points to be part of the training data set, and then the 10 last data points um, or basically from the 10th the last data point to the end, um, we'll use as our test data set. So now um, creating the nearest neighbor classifier is as easy as just calling this K neighbors classifier with N neighbors equal to three. Um, so this will be our three nearest neighbors or K and N with K equal to three. Um, and then we fit that to our iris X training data and iris y training data so this uh, these are our input features and this is our target um, so that's all that's necessary um, as you can see in the output here it says that it has used this minkowski um, metric which is which is essentially the euclidean um, distance that i've uh, i've used uh, i've talked about before so we can now with this trained k neural network uh, k um k nearest neighbor algorithm we can now make predictions based on the input features in our test data set. Now we'll subtract here the, um, the, the targets in our test data set, the actual targets. We'll subtract those from our predicted target values. So ideally these should be zero if we have the right prediction. Um, and as you can see in one out of the 10 cases, we have a difference that is not equal to zero. So that means that we made the wrong prediction. We can also use the KNN score parameter uh, um, function uh, based on the training X values and the training Y values or the training input features and the training targets. Um, and we can compare that with the, um, the KNN score for or the accuracy for the test um, uh, data set. And as you can see in uh, the case of the training data set, we got about 96% accuracy um, and in the case of the test data set, we got 90% accuracy, which is of course what we saw already here, um, since we had one um, out of 10 values that was incorrectly predicted. So I, uh, I talked about how this depends on the value of K, right? We can pick a different value of K. In this case, we picked K equal to three. Um, so let's pick all possible K values, these K values from one to 139, um, there's about 140 points in this uh, in the training data set. So the maximum number of neighbors will be 139. Um, so we can use 139. These are all odd numbers. Um, I, I don't necessarily need to stick to odd numbers because it's not a binary classification problem. There's three different classes, um, but let's stick to odd numbers because that's uh, it's a good thing to remember that for binary classification problems. So we'll create a new K neighbors classifier for each of those values of K. Um, and then we'll fit um, this to our training data and then look at the scores for our training and our test data. And then ultimately plot the scores for training and test data. So as you can see, um, we start for K equal to, um, K equal to one, we start with a training data set score 
that is at 100 percent so for k equal to one we always make the right prediction for the training data set because the nearest neighbor to each training data point will be that training data point itself so obviously we'll get the right value um, so that will be 100 percent and then you see it goes down to let's say 70 percent as we go to um, um, the largest number of neighbors here um, at the same time we have our test data set here which starts off at 90 percent which we already determined at k equal to 3 um, but then there's a range here where it, where it goes up to 100 percent um, and then it goes down as well so as you can see it will be important when you use k nearest neighbors to look at a, a couple of different values for k um, look at uh, both the performance on the training data set and then more importantly the performance on your test data set so um, so this will be important in your um, in your use of the k nearest neighbor so um, the next thing we'll look at is decision tree classification so um, we've already done now or um, k nearest neighbors in our classification problem um, and uh, we'll look next at the decision tree classification.